Silhouette Studio, there is always more than one way to accomplish something. For example, if you want to use your drawing tools, you can come over to the left hand side and choose a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, an ellipse, or a regular polygon. You click on one of the choices, come over to where you want to design, double click, and drag that out. Another way that you can draw shapes is by using shortcut keys. In order to create an ellipse, you simply click E on your keyboard, double click, and drag that out. Click on R to create a rectangle, shift R for a rounded rectangle, and shift P for a regular polygon. Now, if I want to make a duplicate copy of this ellipse, I can click on the ellipse and I have the duplicate button up here. I can right click and come down to duplicate here. Or I can come up to the object tab and choose replicate. And then I can choose to duplicate left, right, above or below. I can also duplicate by using the control or command key on my computer keyboard and an arrow key. So if I press control and the left arrow, it will duplicate to the left. Control and down duplicates below and so on. Now I can select all of these, right click and choose group from the drop down menu, or I can select all of them and choose to use control G on my keyboard. Ungroup is control shift G. This next one is probably my favorite one. It'll save a ton of time. I would say 90% of my designs have some sort of text element in them. And in order to create text, you can come over to the left hand side and click on the text button here. However, if you are already in your design area, you can simply click on the T on your keyboard. That will change your pointer. Click on your design area and then you can simply type out whatever you want. Now when working with cursive fonts, a lot of times you will need to weld before you cut. Of course, you can right click and choose weld here. Or you can come up to the top, go to modify and weld. Or you can open up your modify panel on this side and weld. But if you are in a hurry and you remember your keyboard shortcuts, you can click on Control, Shift, and W, and that will weld it together. Then you will do Control G to group. I do a lot of print and cut. Um, so one of my favorites is turning on the registration marks. You simply press M on your keyboard and they appear. If you decide you did not want to print this at all, but you were just going to cut, you could simply click on M and it would disappear. Now I've seen a lot in groups where people end up with their crosshairs turned on. To turn them on, you simply type H on your keyboard. It's very easy to turn them on by accident. And then people aren't sure how they did it or how to get rid of them, but the crosshairs will follow your pointer around the screen and it's used to line up different objects in your design. A lot of people leave them turned on. I do not enjoy them being there all the time. They get in my way. So in order to turn them off, click H again and the crosshairs will disappear. Another shortcut that gets used all the time by accident is center of rotation. You turn on the center of rotation simply by typing O and this circle with the crosshairs comes up. It's very useful in different situations. However, when you are designing, it can get in the way. To turn it off, simply click O again, and it will disappear. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this stuff. And then if I decide that I did not want it all deleted, I can simply use Control Z 
to undo the last thing that I did. Control Z is undo, and that's definitely one that you should remember. Now, while you are trying to learn these shortcuts, you can go up to the object panel when something is selected, and you can see that a lot of these are listed right in the drop down menu. I know it's an extra step to click on the tab up here, but while you're learning, this is extremely helpful. There is also a list of all of the shortcuts in the user's manual. You can click on the help tab, then user's manual to bring that up. And there is a lot of information in here. I do suggest that everybody reads through it, but most people are not going to. But if you do scroll all the way down, they have a list here of all of the shortcuts you can use. My recommendation would be that you pick however many you can remember your favorite ones and start by using them. You can add them in gradually. And while you probably do not want to print all 118 pages of the user's manual, you can come up to these three dots here, click on print, head down to this area here, enter page 118, and select print. That will print out only this shortcut page, and you can have it on hand for reference. 